Hi everyone, Trash you all are doing well. So what we're going to do in this episode is we're going to create two API resources, one for the article and one for the author, but we're going to create a resource collection as well for our index of our article controller right there. Since we're returning a collection in our index, we it's quite preferable if we use a resource collection for that. Now, in order to create a resource, we just open up our terminal. What we can do is just php artisan make a resource. All right. Now, if you want a little bit more information about that, you can just do help in front of that. So what it does, it kind of gives you a couple of options. If you want to create a resource collection, you just add the dash C. If you want more help, dash A and 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 and. All right. So let me just clear this. All right, so what I want to do now is let's quickly create that. So PHP artisan make a resource. Make sure I spell it correctly. A resource, what I want to do, I want to create a version for the resource as well. All right, so in this case, it's version one. And what I want to do in there, I'm just going to create an article the resource like this. All right, so then I press enter just to create that for us. All right, so let's create another one. This one is basically going to be for our author. So author resource like this. Okay, so there's our author resource created. But there's another one that I want to create. It's basically for articles right here. So, I'm, But instead of the a resource, I just want to kind of just make it distinctive between the two. I'm just going to call it collection. And I just want to add the day C for that. So let's quickly create that as well. So as you can see, a resource collection is created. So let's quickly go to that folder. So under app, HTTP, you'll see we've got a new folder called the resources. So as you can see, we've got a version one right there. All right, so as you can see, we've got an article collection. So this one basically returns a collection and it will return it like this. We're going to obviously update this in a second, but I quickly want to show you this. The other one is for the article resource, and the other one is for the author resource right here. So let's start off with the article collection right here. Now, as it is right now, it will just return basically an array in JSON format to basically do we ever request a certain resource, but it's not being used yet. In order to use it, we need to go to our controllers. Let's go to our article controller. Since I want to make use of the collection that I just created, all right? So I'm just going to say return a new article, all right? Now, in this case, what I want to do is I want to return that article collection, and then I just want to pass in the article and all of them, just like that. Now, what you can do, you can add paginate, but I just want to return all of them as is. Now, the next thing that I want to do, now, if we go in here, in our article resource. Now, I want to add a certain type of information that I want to send basically to the client. You can leave obviously this as is, but if you want to customize the data, I'm just going to return clear this for myself. And I just want to create an array. Now, the first one, this is can be called data. Now, the data, what I want to return, I just want to return this collection like this. All right. Not like that. Now, the next thing that I want to return. Now, you can add any links you want in here. All right. Now, you can say links. And this can be basically to itself. You can just say self and the value. Any value you want. But in this case, I'm not going to add any of that for now. So, I'm just going to leave it like this. Just at the collection. Now, what else we can do is we can add some extra information. We can create a public function and we can just say with. Now we're just going to pass in the request like this. Now the with, I'm just going to return a status to let the person know like listen, A is a success. So in this case, I'm just want to return a status. Now let's just do like a status. Now the status can be a success message. Right? And what we can do is we can send a response as well. So let's just do that. So public function. And in this case, we're going to add a width. And then we can just say a response. 
Now the response we can pass in the request, a request and a response. This needs to be a comma in there. So basically with the response we can pass in the request and the response. Now the response, uh, response, what we can do, is we can pass in a header like here. Now, in this case, we just want to make sure that any data that we send to the front end needs to be in JSON format. So we can just do an accept. And then we can just say application forward slash JSON. All right, so we will see this in a coming episode where we need to basically use Postman. Then I will explain then you will understand this a little bit more in detail. But this is basically a response in the header. So I'll just put an example quickly for you that I want to show you. All right, so as you can see in the headers right here, it will accept it in JSON format. So if we go to the JSON data, you will see that we got the data right there, we got the article, and we got all the different links and attributes and things like that. Okay, but what I want to do is I want to create the resource for the article resource, all this kind of information. We're going to edit that now in a second, but I just wanted to show you the accept header that gets in here as well. Now, another thing that you can do is you can pass it as a version, but we're not doing any versioning in the header, but that's totally up to you. So if you want to pass in the version in the header section, what you do is you can add it in the response right here. You can set version version like this and then you can add any you can say version 1.0 whatever the case may be totally totally up to you All right so let me just delete this now the next thing that i want to do is i want to basically update our resource article resource so if we go to app http resource now let's work on our so article collection is finished so here is where we're returning that collection so let's go to the basically the article resource right here. Before we start returning any value right here, so I'm not gonna, I'm gonna actually define basically what I want to return to the client, All right? So it, for now it's empty, but let me start off with the first thing. Now this is going to be called a public um, static, and we're gonna call this one a wrap. Now the wrap, if we go, let me quickly show you. By default, it's wrapped with data. If you can see that there's data right there. By default, it's wrapped like that. But if we go to forwards to the article itself, let's go to one of them. Let's go to this one. Now if we go to the default, you can wrap them with articles or you can wrap them with anything you want. In this case, I want to wrap them with articles. As you can see, the status is success. And that's what I want to do. So I want to wrap them all with by default with not data with articles. So let's do that. So if you call this something else, instead of articles, this is the wrap that will basically encapsulate your data. All right. So by default, it is actually data. So if you want to something else, in my case, I want it to be articles. So that's what I'm going to do there. All right. So now this is basically the, the structure of our data. How are we returning it to, to the client? Now, the first thing that I want to do is I want to be return a type. Now, the type is articles. Okay, so that's the type that I want to return. Now, the ID of the article, okay, I want to return this ID. Just remember, I created a method inside my article model. So let me just go there. To anybody that's new, I created this ID method that I'm referencing, okay, to return a string for me. Okay, so that's the ID. Now, the next thing is I want to return attributes for that. So, attributes, okay, so that just creates an array as well. All right, so for the attributes, what I want to do in here is I want to return the title. So, I can just say this title just remember since i created those methods i'm referencing them like this if you don't have the message just return uh, just reference the property okay the next thing is the slug okay so we just want to do and then we can just say this 
uh, slug. I don't know if I created a method for the slug. Let me just make sure of that. Let's go to article model title and we got the method for the slug. All good. All right. Now the next thing that you can do in here is for the created add dates. So like this. Okay, so we can just do that. Let me just do this. Since I haven't created any methods for that, I'm just going to return this created at date. All right, just like that. Now you can obviously do whatever you want in here, any, any of the attributes. Now the next thing is this is for the relationship. Just remember we got a one-to-many relationship uh, article. Basically have many, uh, one author and an author has many articles okay so basically an author belongs uh, article belongs to an author and author has many articles all right so that's basically the relationships that we have in here okay so let's just do that and we just want to create an array for the relationships in this case is the author okay and the author what i want to do now is i want to reference that author resource okay so author resource we haven't done anything in that yet, but I want to just reference it from here, but we're going to update after this. And then we just want to reference this author. Okay. Remember this author, if we go, let me just open our article model. I like to explain to you guys what is happening. I'm referencing this method inside our has author, this one right here, because remember we created that trait of has author. And in that we have, we can reference it like this all right so basically create our author resource but we haven't created that yet we're going to create that in a second now this part is where the links come in handy okay so what i want to do is i want to create links now in this it's just saying self so that if the client on the front end is looking at the api they will know all right this is the link to this resource okay so for the the resource itself so i'm just going to create because this is what we're going to do in the next episode create the routes so articles dot show we haven't created this yet but we will do it in the next episode then we reference this id okay now the next thing is this is going to be a related route okay so this is the route with the id and this related route is basically the route with the slack Okay, so he can choose to either go to the to this article through the ID, or he can go to the article through the slug. Okay, so we're just going to do uh, to the same one and articles dot show, and we can just say this slug. All right, so that's a related link to that same article through the ID, or they can use the slug. Awesome. Right, so the next thing that we want to do is we want to do, uh, let's just go there. And underneath this, we can create a method with, okay? So public function. All right, so this is with. So the message that we want to send, so I want to send a status, status of basically a success message. Okay, so let's just do a request. And then we just say a return. And let's do it like this. Now we can just say status and then we just want to say it is a success. All right, so let me quickly show you this. All right, so we can obviously do this in more detail when we're using Postman so that you will see that. But for now, I'm just using the browser as it is because I want to explain a couple of things when we get to Postman. So as you can see, so when someone goes in here, they will see the article, the wrap. Okay, then they will see the type, it's an article, then they'll get the ID. Right, and then I got attributes. Obviously, right now we have the title and then we have the slug. So that they have access to that. And obviously we added the created ad date. Now, as you can see, this is the relationship and you'll see the author type. And we're still going to get to this part right here. And then we have the links. So as you can see, the article with a link of one and the other one with the slug right there. Now, as you can see, the width is this one right here with the status of success. Okay, awesome. Right, so after that, what we want to do is we want to do it with a response in the header. So that is, let's quickly do that. And we can just say with response. All right, and then we just want to add the request and obviously the response. 
All right, so this is basically the response. And we can just gonna add the header. Now this is basically gonna have the accept by default, and it's just gonna be application JSON. So that's the format we want the data to be in. Application forward slash JSON. So if someone is looking at our header, they will know immediately this will return in JSON format. All right, so this is basically our article resource all done. Now the next part that we need to do is we need to work on our author resource. Okay, so let's do that. All right, so this will be quite easy. So what I want to do is I'm just going to return an array. All right, so let's just close this off. And this will be a type, and the type will be people, or you can call it whatever you want. So in my case, I'm just going to call it people. And it's just going to be an ID. Now ID will be basically this ID. Now the ID that I'm referencing right here, let's quickly open up our user model. So as you can see, I'm returning the ID like this and the name, right? So just like that. So if you see me referencing the methods, just remember the methods I created myself. So if you don't want to do that, you can just return the property, right? So this name like this, right? And then obviously a links. Okay, so if we go to links, so if someone is basically viewing this resource right here, they can see that how do they get to a link to this resource. And I'm just going to say self, and I'm just going to create a route. So we haven't created this route yet, and I'm just going to call it authors. And then I'm just passing this ID like this. Okay, so that's basically our resources all set up. So we got our author resource like here. All right, so this is basically the structure of the data that we send to the client. And the other one is we got a collection, just the data that we return, this collection with the status of success and the header accept application data. Uh, JSON, actually, if we go to the article resource, this is basically the structure that we send to the front end. Okay, so obviously you can create a method right here. So right now I'm just, I don't want to waste too much time. So I just return the property like that. Okay, and then in the relationships, I return the author as this right here. So what it will do, it will make a resource in this data structure like this. All right, so anyways, let me quickly show you an example. All right, so this is basically the author, and then you will have the structure like this. All right, so what we will do in the next episode is we need to create the routes for basically our API. So see you guys there, and give the video a thumbs up, and see you there. Adiós.